Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We've got to talk about the Dell boxes. One particular we're talking about is the Dell PowerEdge T310. Uh, we had a viewer out there ask a question. They bought a tower, PowerEdge Tower 310. Uh, comes with four hard drives, two terabytes each, from I believe. Just check his email actually. Um, yeah, so we got, um, so just checking the email he sent to me. So we've got um, PowerEdge 310 so uh, X340. Four four zero Q, QC two point five three gigahertz, uh, four two terabyte hard drives, and he's also got a RAID controller installed, and four hard drives at two terabytes each, and got it's quite a big spec actually thirty two gigabyte of RAM, and I've got a feeling the processors are probably something like eight cores. I think I'm quite powerful. So in theory, the reason why I'm sort of sitting here. It's the same sort of power as one of my servers here because he's got a tower. These are sort of the, the rack equivalent version of the Power Edge. Now, this is the same cinema. This one is similar. Let me let me change the camera angle around so I can sort of tell you in more detail. So this one here is similar to the build you've got. It's got four hard drives installed, CD, CD DVD ROM. It's got 32 gig RAM, but may have slightly different processors. But this one is my is the rack version, so it's quite long. But you've got the tower version. So you was talking about um, you was actually talking about um, you you, you do want you wanted simple farm prints, and you don't want to mess about with domains. There's two ways of doing this. There's the um, hard way of doing this. Well, depends what level of skills you have. So if you um, want to implement Windows 2000 server on there, then you'll have to put a domain in it to make it a farm print server to be able to generate shares. Because um, then you need to be able to pay, create people's logins that log into it, um, and then they get rights to access the shares. But if you don't want to mess about with all the logins, you don't want to mess about installing domains, there is a second way you can actually do this. Now, a couple, couple ways you do this. You'll probably find the build you've got on your box is Quite a powerful server for 32 gigs of RAM, and the, and the core and, and the, the disk space you've got as well. That's and you've got 25 users. That's that's a way more than enough power this server can actually deal with. So what I would do is I would install VMware bare bones directly onto the server, like I have done with this. So that one should the T310 should um, be at should be able to, to uh, have VMware installed. Now, you download VMware, you download VMware, I think it's like uh, SX something it's called, which is free to download, it's free to use. It will neutralize the 32 gig of RAM you've got in your machine and all your CPUs. The only reason why it comes expensive if you want to buy all the add-on support stuff, if you want to use it as a straight VMware server, then the free version works well, because that's basically why I have installed on here. So now I've got VMware bare bones installed on here. Um, I've set the RAID, the disks up um, into my VMware. So that's now got the VMware loaded on as one volume. So I can now mount uh, on my, my VMware's on there. I can mount in virtual hard disks in there for any of my VM servers. So if you want to go down the domain route, VMware, then build yourself a Windows 2000 an 8 server as a VMware virtual server inside this. I would create some of the space on here as an additional second disk for the VMware and run your farm print from there. Or you could probably say I'll stick a VMware on here running to a 2008 server for instance. We're assigned as 100 gig VMware but then we're going to assign the rest of this disk space um, say, say like 2 terabytes, 4 terabytes as a virtual disk for that VMware. That way rounds, and the reason why I cho chose that, say for instance you had a problem with this hardware and you needed to shift the VMware off, but you, then you had a second Dell so that was different make and manufacture to that one, or maybe it was a HP, but supports VMware. You can move the, the, the VMware off onto that one without anything worrying, because with Windows 2000 server, or any of the Windows products basically, if you move it from one hardware to another hardware, it's completely different. You're going to have plug and play issues with the CPU, the, the chipset, and all that stuff, and it comes really, really messy. So, VMware it means you can move your environments onto another VMware box 
Or say, for instance, you, you don't want to buy another server, you want to build a pre-built box like I've got here. If you install Windows 10 on it and VMware Workstation on here, you can then take the VMware virtual environment and migrate it down onto here. It's migratable. It works really, really well. So that's one way I would do it. Install VMware on the box. Um, hi, Philip. Sorry, someone's messaging me here. <laughs> uh, it's VMware on the box. Build your server as a virtual server and virtual disks. That way you can shift it around. So if you do decide to buy a second DAO box, you can shift them between two boxes, low balance it. Or if, say for instance, your machine, something happens to your machine and you need to get the VMware off of here, you can easily move it onto one of these boxes that run VMware Workstation version, then you can run it directly from there if you wanted to. Now, if you wanted to keep it really simple and basic, and I'm gonna keep this video quite, quite quickly, um, and you wanna keep it really simple and basic, then what I would do is, and you don't wanna mess about with domains and all of the, sometimes you get, with domains you get domain issues, especially if you've got a domain set up, then what I would do is keep it really, really simple, use Unraid, which I actually installed on my box which is here. So these two servers here basically runs Unraid. So here we've got a flat server running Windows 2000 server directly on the hardware. Okay, then we've got this one running VMware with Windows 2000 with VMware already on it because that's basically what I've got on here and that runs my Exchange server. Now I built these two boxes here, Unraid. Unraid you can pay about $50 and it gives you, and that turns your whole server into an actual NAS server. You can run you can run um, private virtual servers inside Unraid if you want to. So check my videos out with the link up here that I'll put on a bit later after I've done this live video. Uh, or, or check my videos out somewhere on my channel here. You'll see how I built these and how Unraid works. And Unraid is really simple install. You need a memory stick key, only a very small one, 32 gig of RAM that sits in the back of here in the USB port. You put Unraid onto that stick, you boot from the your USB port, and it boots Unraid. Then you can then configure this to be a, NA, a big NAS box, put your user IDs, passwords on it, create your shares, and bang, any PC on the network, whether it's, um, whether it's Linux, uh, whether it's Mac, or whether it's PC, it will see this as a NAS on your box. That's, so, that's much more simple. Now, when you're installing Windows 2000 server directly onto a Dell box, you need to run the actual installation CD that comes with your Dell first. Once that runs through its, its setup, because it will partition a bit of space on the drive, um, it will also give you the option to configure this as a RAID drive as well. Then once it's finished, it will pop the disk out and ask you to put in the original Windows 2008 server in installation disk, bung it in there, carries on the install. Once it's finished, it will eject the disk, It'll reboot and start installing Windows 2008 server. Then you have to go through all the gubbins of setting it up that way around. But I think to keep it really simple solution, you don't want to mess about with domains. You don't want to, you don't want to be adding an Exchange server on it later on. You just want it as a literally a NAS box, draw glorified NAS box. I would use Unraid that like I've done on these boxes here and install it on the Dell box itself. But remember, you need a memory stick key to plug in the back that the Unraid actually sits on. So on these two boxes, they have memory stick here at the back with Unraid on, on it. These are two NAS boxes that can be seen by my Mac, my iPhones, some here, my tablet. And also I run literally on this box here, I also run virtual servers. So I've got a virtual exchange running on this one here. I'm gonna be migrating off of this box onto the Unraid box. So this will run virtual servers as well as being a glorified NAS box. That's much more cheaper than that way around. So if you just wanted a NAS box only, Unraid, $50. If you want to install Windows 2000 Server directly onto your hardware, then it's whatever it costs to buy um, Windows 2000 Server. Plus you've got to consider about licenses, cows, cow licenses for your Windows. So it's 25 years of cows, so you probably end up spending like a good couple of grand on the Windows 2008 Server to run directly on here. Now, if you do it the un Unraid way, $50 gives you a full version of Unraid. There's no client access licenses, and it opens up to, you can have you can have more than 25 users hacking that box. And with the spec you have on your um, Dell server, it'll be one hell of a powerful uh, NAS server for your network. So hopefully that answers your questions. 
Um, if you want me to do some videos on installing Windows 2008 server, I think I already have it on this channel. If not, I'll redo a new one and put it on this channel for you because I'm actually in the middle of um, building a VMware running Windows 2016 server, which is really nice. So I'll have that put on there. Is that a T310 server? No, this is just an example I'm using. Um, T310 server is an actual tower server and it's the Dell, the, the Dell make anyway and I'll just roughly sort of give this an illustration. I did have a T310 server in my garage which I recently sold on so I can't really use that as a reference with this video. So I thought I'd just quickly do it because this is a much, much the same spec as the T3. Maybe it's got a bit more better processor in it. You know, I can't remember exactly what this spec is. The title says tower server. Yeah, 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 title saying tower server. This is just an FAQ for um, a viewer that's asked me about, so I'm just literally using that as a bit of an illustration um, because I don't have the T310 server with me. This is an actual FAQ for a viewer, okay? So anyway, that's, I hope that gets um, helps a lot. So it says tower server, I'm gonna say I've got a few T310 servers. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, okay, cool. Right, anyway, it's late, late night, I'm still installing Exchange 2016 uh, on on this virtual server which is in California and I'll be installing um, Exchange 2016 on the VM on my Unray box so some videos will come out very soon on that because I mean they're actually still moving so um, 4th of July I get my new man cave built uh, and then all this will get moved into my man cave with the new uh, Virgin Fibre uh, broadband which is 350 meg um, downloads and a 20 meg upload feed, which is pretty good. But it's not good as the California uh, fiber optic lines, they're much faster than the UK ones. So anyway, thanks a lot guys for watching and see you on the next one. Cheers.